afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> again, we will do some, uh, again, some teachings and a touch base on this teaching. <coughs> what we are going on by chapter the new Ramuchi. And so then we go over this. And in order to begin that again, uh, we are not going to forget our the best, the, our home best, and which is the motivation. And that is beautiful motivation. We have to activate it, our beautiful motivation of the joy and the appreciation and bodhijata and then vajayana purity or the vajay, three vajay state, those kind of understanding or the realization kind of truly activated sizzling status then we begin to reflect it on the teachings. And what we are doing is what in a great teacher, Buddha teacher mentioned, always mentioned, studying and contemplating and practicing, meditating. We are doing that all these three things together, three are together in these two and a half hours or two hour sessions. What are we doing? So really we are doing beautiful. According to Buddhism, it is wonderful. And during that time, we cultivated our this beautiful motivation. <clears throat> this is known as power of the mind. We are activating that. So therefore, it's so beautiful. And again, with that, then we go to this teaching. Now, on the teaching, what we're talking about the three jewels. Three jewels is the foundation and the focal point of the Buddhism. Doesn't matter which schools you came. And Buddhism has many different schools. Theravadas, Sutra Mahayanas, Vedayana schools, so forth. But the three jewel it has no difference. Everyone follow with three jewels. They say number one, same time it is a center of columns. Not just a number one and then kind of forget that. It is a continual caring, caring or during all our practices. And being in Buddhism, the goal is to achieve or to discover the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. This time, of course, is like our destin in a destination goal. But same time is our focal point, our foundations. So now we are talking about the, or I'm talking about the three jewels. Among the three jewels, Buddha, I mean those three jewels are the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. And then among the three jewels, I'm talking about the, as we all know, about the Buddha. Buddha means totally enlightened beings. That means that the final goal of the practices is fulfilled when you become the Buddha. That is then final goal. There is nothing higher for the to go. You achieve full peak of the realization. That. So that is known as Buddha. When you become the Buddha, it's not just one individually now becomes something, a kind of higher status. This is what, what, what in Buddhism called, again, continual beginning to benefit for all living beings. This is really truly beginning to benefit for all living beings. So how but that's going to help benefit for beings through different emanations that Buddha is going to benefit for all beings. First, Buddha achieved when he reached enlightenment, what that is known as reaching enlightenment as a Dharmakaya status. That is the ultimate goal. The Buddha, they himself, he or herself, now reach the Dharmakaya status. Once you achieve the Dharmakaya status, now, as I said, begin to benefit and helping to all living beings without any discriminations until everyone wake up each and each and each, each and of everyone's potential or their innate nature. They're going to walk, benefit. That is known as emanations. 
And that the terminology in the teaching it is the emanations named Kayas. So I'm talking of the Kayas yesterday. First, Kaya is the Buddha reaching enlightenment. Then, the rest, all those other Kayas, such as Sambo Kaya, Dharma Kaya, all those are different emanations, different displays. And what the example of that emanations in the teaching of transmission. For example, when the brilliant sun shines in the sky, free from clouds, mists, anything, those kind of turbulence, clouds, anything, when it shines, it will reflect that sunshine wherever there is any kind of circumstances and conditions, such as all the forms, all the legs on the earth, all the ponds of the earth, all the mirrors, wherever, there is no need be shortage of the emanation. It will reflect everywhere as the circumstances, conditions are occurred or are there. That display of the reflections of the, all that is known as kayas, emanations. Dharma kaya is like sunlight, sunshine. From that emanating everywhere. Where? So then we are talking about that's what we were talking about kaya to benefit. What these kayas now have, those emanation has, they has then five wisdoms. Through the five wisdom, they're going to benefit for all the living beings. When the five wisdoms we we'll be talking about, the when five wisdom, that means they are ultimate state of loving kindness, compassion, kindness, concern, caring, common sense, and practical and openness, respect and appreciation to every living being. When Buddha had or those emanations began to help to the, all the beings, they help according what the suits with the individuals, not forcing, not imposing, something that they can adjust and adapt it so it will aspire and ignite their own inner glories. The final goal, the goal of the Buddhism or the Buddhas to help to the other beings, as I said, as I said, to ignite their inner glories, inner light. Because this inner light or this Buddha nature is equal to every living being. This is what we have to light up, lighten up. So this all the emanations, the guys are beginning to help with, with the perfect knowledge, perfect kindness, and perfect wisdoms. Those are known as five wisdoms that you, we all know, we heard that thing. And now, the first wisdom is foundation wisdom, is known as Dharma Dhatu wisdoms. Dharma Dhatu wisdom is the ultimate wisdom of the true nature of the great emptiness, openness. That is the original wisdoms. From that Dharma Dhatu wisdoms, or Dharma Dhatu, maybe I can say as like great emptiness intelligence, great emptiness wisdoms. When the great emptiness, that openness wisdom, then it has all those other forms. It's right there. All other forms such as Maryland wisdoms, equanimity wisdoms, and the discrimination awareness wisdom, or distinctly understanding knowledge of wisdoms and all accomplished wisdoms right within this Dharma Dhatu wisdom or Merulang wisdoms. It has all that. Why then with this five or four with this account? It's an aspect, different aspect of these wisdoms, aspect. And how that is? That again, I will talk. As you can tell, you can say this, Merrill-like wisdoms. 
We need to matter like wisdoms. What that means? It's a metaphor. Matter, matter is a metaphor. Wisdom that likes matter. So that means within this Dharma Dhatu wisdom, within this Dharma Dhatu wisdom, that everything is reflecting. Reflecting. True like in this mirror surface of the Dharma Dhatu wisdom as mirror images. And how? The everything. That means everything, whatever is existing or occurring, occurring, all is reflecting. What that means? Buddha's wisdom has no blockage of the past, present, and future. Or maybe particularly past and future. And all that is reflecting to this mirror like wisdoms. It's like a giant, like telescope, teles telescope cup that captures the everything. Everything. What well, that means, according to Buddhism, samsara, nirvana, everything is it reflects within that. It's like giant barrel. So because of that knowledge, where it is reflecting, where it is it's a shining hope, that for that reason is known as then marrow like wisdoms. Marrow like wisdoms. This is again when it is reflected, then second one or third one wisdom is equanimity wisdoms. Even though it's reflecting all the everything as both samsara, nirvana, variety of the displays, the situation, the circumstances all come, but when it comes to the mirror, mirror, there's nothing is different at all. It's within that mirror. Within that mirror, or mirror will have busters. Well, it also is just blended in everything. There is no different compartment. Oh, this is some sort of aspect of marrow like wisdom. This is the nirvana like aspect of marrow. Or this is the ups and downs situation, circumstances, knowledge of wisdom. This is not all blended in. Completely within that. There is even no different trace or the marks of the different those aspects. It's completely equalized. And balanced, blended in, or whatever terminology we use. That aspect of knowledge, wisdom, is known as equanimity wisdom. Even the next one, third one, is discrimination awareness wisdom. Or I am also translated distinctly understanding clearly the knowledge or wisdom that knowledge. That means even though it's blended in every day, there is complete, there is no different compartment, compartment all in the, the mirror like wisdom or the Dharma Dhatu wisdom, there is nothing. But yet, everything is clearly understanding, everything, so thoroughly, so precise, so, so, so subtle, so final, everything understand. That wisdom that captures everything of the past, future, detail, Everything so clear, distinctly in the teaching said that that putting as like maybe I use the, the example of the marble, crystal marble. If you put on your own palm, you can see clearly, thoroughly everything. Like that, every knowledge of the objects, both the samsara and nirvana, are so precisely, so clearly, so subtle, so detailed, so fine. And that's what the really known as the distinctly, clearly understanding wisdom. Everything so detailed, so thought. Not kind of over, overcasted, or kind of like overlapped each other. Everything detail of that. That is known as the discrimination awareness wisdom or distinctly distinctly understanding wisdom or clearly knowing wisdom. And the next one or the fourth or fifth one is all accomplishing wisdoms. Because of that knowledge, 
because of that wisdom, then everything is perfectly accomplishing according to situation, circumstances, and everything completing, fulfilling everything. There is no need forcing, no need to push. I got exactly the right way to completing and fulfilling that all the activities. According to their situations, circumstances, capabilities, or readiness, exactly where they exactly need to be fulfilling. And that aspect of knowledge, when that fulfill, the, the, who is, who, which, which is fulfilling, what is the fundamental cause to fulfilling that is intelligence or the wisdom. And that is aspect is known as the all accomplishing wisdom. So that is the, what this all this this all the Buddhas about the wisdoms. And as I said yesterday, when we talk about wisdom, maybe many, many times we think, oh, this is just a wisdom, wisdom. But this wisdom is completely blended up in or together with loving kindness, compassion. Compassion is completely that, saturated or together. And that is the, the, the wisdom. This is the wisdom. This wisdom can be summarized into two wisdoms. And that was known as wisdom that understanding all the absolute truth, exactly, uh, absolute truth, exactly as it is. Wisdom that understanding relative truth, exactly as it is. And again, wisdom that understand exactly the absolute truth as it is. And <clears throat> so, and worse than that, understanding exactly relative truth as it is. So this is known as true wisdoms. And so that means this five wisdom can be summarized into true wisdoms. That is, again, there is a different kind of the great masters' interpretations, but we know simple way to tell Dharma Datu wisdom is a wisdom that understands the absolute truth the exactly as it is. That is the, 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 uh, the wisdom that understanding absolute truth as it is. And then as the four wisdoms, such as moral wisdom, economic wisdoms, or and, and not all, and, and all accomplishing wisdoms, and uh, this uh, wisdom that understand distinctly, clearly, as it is, that four wisdoms are, can be summarized within them. The wisdom that understand the relative truth, exactly as it is. So that is true wisdoms. It's simple to tell again, the wisdom of the absolute truth, wisdom of relative truth. True wisdoms. Now these two wisdoms can be summarized in a one wisdoms. That is, as I, as I said yesterday, two. Two, then the great wisdom of the omniscient. Great wisdom of the omniscient of the enlightenment. That is then, yes, all summarized, or, or that is the wisdom. So that is really about the wisdoms. Again, as we spoke the other day, how we say, when we explain it about the Buddha, the kayas and the wisdoms and the beneficial activities of the Buddhas. Those are three we made, or I made a kind of like uh, divisions. And the kayas, or the emanations of kayas are the best of the wisdom and the beneficial activities. In other words, the beneficial activity and the wisdoms are came because Buddha reached the Dharmakaya status or achieved Buddhahood. Then wisdom and beneficial activity come spontaneously because that's why then we spoke about the kayas 
And the guys are, I'm translating today also, emanations. We spoke about the emanations. Then we spoke just an hour about the residents. Now I talk really about the beneficial activities. Benefit. So when you reach enlightenment and you become the Buddha, as I said, you begin to now to benefit and helping to all the living beings to ignite their inner wisdoms or inner potentials. That is really the purpose of it. And when you reach in that, that when you discover the, your, each of every one of their own potentials, that is what is known as, then everyone becomes the Buddha. And every day really discover our potential or our Buddha nature, then we're still struggling in the samsara and all the different challenges and difficulties. So to that, clear with the suffering and difficulty is to wake up our original natural state and discover our original qualities, our, our original richness. That's what really the, known as the, the teachings of the Buddhas. So for that reason, now since beings are number, beings of certain beings, is a, there's no numbers according to Buddhism. There's so many beings. So therefore, we need, need always help to all the same beings. That's why Buddha developed the Bodhicitta, and that's why Buddha carried that Bodhicitta and activated that with the Bodhicitta activities, and then become the Buddhahood. Now, the full bloom going to benefit, help it to all the same beings. So now, benefit the same beings, how? Those are in the teaching said three ways. And continuation, pervasive, and spontaneously. Those are the three qualities of the way benefiting for all the living beings. Again, first is continuation. Second is pervasive. Third is spontaneously. So those three ways Buddha is going to help to all the living beings. How? What is the behind? Is again if I summarize, Buddha is going to benefit all those beings with loving kindness, with compassion or loving kindness and compassion and wisdoms and abilities, strength and power. These three are the, the power behind to benefiting to all the beings with the continuation, pervasive, spontaneous. And now, loving kindness and compassion of the Buddha is opening in the Buddha's teaching. Mention is true. Buddha loves all living beings as mother's only her child. Love all the living beings without any discrimination. Every living being, love, Buddha loves every living being as, like, as for example, mother's her only her child. Buddha loves. How long? Buddha Buddha. Until everyone becomes the Buddha mood. Again, Buddha mood, and maybe another word I can use, until they discover ultimate their own true nature. Buddha Buddha. So that is love. The loving kindness, compassion is. Then also, how the Buddha going to help? Going to help with the wisdom. Wisdom. And that five wisdom I mentioned in particular those four wisdoms exactly going to help to those beings as they need it. As I said already, already, not forcing, not pushing, not imposing, not, not kind of like bossy, with respect, appreciation, calm, politeness, according to their readiness. Buddha help. How 
how that people in the teaching said, Buddha will usher those beings on the lower realms, three lower realms. Buddha will usher them to the higher realms, such as human realms. And the, when they got in human realm, Buddha will usher them to the path according to their readiness. What that means, path? Path. According to Buddhism, there is a three path. Path of the Sharvaka, path of the Partika Buddha, and the path of the Bodhisattvas. So according to their readiness, Buddha will usher to them those paths. What are those generally means? Again, it's nothing strange that Buddha is going to lead in different directions. It's just that they will go. Buddha is going to help to touch their inner best. Love and compassion, according to their readings, according to their situations. So those who are like Sharvaka, Sharvaka, they are not going to think too much of other things according to their teaching. They are going to really thinking how I am going to come out of samsara. So Buddha will help them to come out of samsara. Those like Sharvaka in the book and uh, in the party of Buddhas or the solitude Buddhas and then in the Arhatas. So Buddha will help to them to reach their desire, their interests. Those individuals who like to benefit, not just only I like to come out of samsara, but I like to help to the other sentient beings to come out of samsara. So then those are known as the Bodhisattvas. So Buddha will help to aspire according to their desire to really reach themselves to enlightenment and also to help and to aspire to benefit for all the beings. So when they reach to the, that, that state, how the Buddha will help according to teaching. Then when they reach to the Sharvaka state or the Parthi Buddha state, Bodhisattva state, finally Buddha will then, they will help to aspire, they become totally enlightened state, Buddha. So that means, from the law, three lower realms, Buddha will usher to the higher realms. From higher realms, Buddha will usher to the path of the Sharvaka, Parthi Buddha, and Bodhisattva. From there, Buddha will usher to the final destination of fulfillment of the Buddha who states. Those are in the teaching making. How that Buddha will help. And when Buddha help, also on Buddha's time, I mean this. The practitioners or the sentient beings are ready to need to help but those beings. They are ready, they are waiting for to really wake up to the wake up to themselves, to the original state or whatever the state they like. They are ready to that. Buddha will be timing will be so perfect. Buddha's timing will be never going to delay. In the teaching it says the tide of ocean can mix up something. But the Buddha's time never going to mix up timing or to benefit for all the sentient beings. And the Buddha's through his loving kindness and compassion and wisdom, Buddha always, every living being who need help, who need support. Therefore, in the, always in the teaching said, when you have the, the ring of devotions, ring, like round ring, the hook of the compassion of the Buddha or the blessing of the Buddha welcome so easy. So there are devotions ring. Or when you open up the devotion window, the sunlight of the window, that light will come inside so easily, beautiful, there is no delay of this. That's what really the teaching said. So that is how Buddha is continually helping. And so it's called that is what uh, is how long that Buddha is going to help. Is for, for until everyone reaches enlightenment. Enlightenment. So it is a continuation. It's not just a once in a year, twice in a year, or the one century, two centuries, or like that. But it's continuing until everyone reaches enlightenment. That is known as known as continuation beneficial activities. Then is a sorry. <coughs> Then is the pervasives. Buddha's activity is the pervasives. It's not something that 
Buddha's activity is now happening in the southern direction, or is not going to, ha going to happen in the west or the north. No, it's a pervasive. Pervasive of the time, pervasive of the places. There is no distinctions, divisions of the time and the space. Everywhere according, according to the teaching. It's a pervasive. All that. And then third one is when Buddha help. How that help? It's a kind of Buddha him, Buddha him or he or Buddha themselves pushing, can making so much effort and all that things. No, it's spontaneous. Spontaneous without any effort. It's easy going, easy moving, flowing continually, naturally, smoothly, beautifully, shining smoothly and blended in as it needed. So it is spontaneously. Those are known as principal benefit activities of the Buddhas. Buddhas. So this is what really the Buddhas now. That is. So by that we I have explained really about the among the three jewel, the Buddha. We went. Again, as I said, said is not something that I'm talking new things you did not hear. And we all heard these teachings, things. So I'm refreshing my memory and yours memories. And maybe I'm remembering sometimes making mistakes. You can correct me too. Too. Since we are refreshing our memories, so you can correct. We all follow the teaching of the gracious teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni and lineage masters. So therefore, again, as he said, we are reminded to each other and we are in a way can correct each other too. So, okay, and that my is that is my brief talk this afternoon. And thank you very much everyone again for participating and coming. Thank you again. Thank you. Now we do short meditation as we've been all done.